I'm James Mansfield. What do you get when you take two major action stars, an edgy comedian, and put them on a road trip? Oh, and by the way, they're in drag. What? Okay, to summarize this quickly, the plot revolves around three drag queens. Two of which, Vita Bohem, played by Patrick Swayze, and Noxima Jackson, played by Wesley Snipes, have just won a pageant where it seemed the only way to win was to show up. This scene is by far the most interesting one to me because it time capsules a lot of New York drag queens, some of which are far more interesting than our protagonists. Even Mama Rue was relegated to just a cameo appearance. I don't know who he is, but if there's a snowstorm tonight, he's going on my tires. What does that even mean? They befriend a baby Latina drag queen, Chi Chi Rodriguez, played by John Leguizamo, and proceed on a road trip under the guise of teaching Chi Chi how to become a proper and true drag queen. When a straight man puts on a dress and gets his sexual kicks, he is a transvestite. When a man is a woman trapped in a man's body and has a little operation, he is a transsexual. I know that. When a gay man has way too much fashion sense for one gender, he is a drag queen. Needless to say, things go awry and suddenly it's witness meets from richer to poorer. All right, so let's break this down. One cannot talk about Tu Wong Fu and not talk about a little film from Down Under. Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. Many claim Tu Wong Fu was a ripoff of Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. Despite the fact that Tu Wong Fu was in production months before Priscilla, the jury is still out on this one, but it's pretty safe to say that Australia got us on this one, folks. They got the idea out first and they did it better. Priscilla was a film that covered many LGBT topics, such as drag careers, rejection, gay bashing, gay parenting, and a rare and layered portrayal of a transgender character that's positive. And more importantly, she doesn't die. That never happens. Which leaves us with a pretty flimsy plot. Ki Wong Fu tries to cover some of these topics, but I fear it's never really given permission to. Well, you don't know me very well, do you, Cripella? I'm a Latina Marilyn Monroe. I got more legs than a bucket of chicken. Let's talk about Chi Chi. As one of the few actors in this film that has actual drag experience, not including Mama Ru or the NYC queens we got a peek of, John Leguizamo was a budding comedian who gained quite a bit of notoriety for his character comedy, inspired by people in his neighborhood in New York. And a few of these characters were roles he appeared in drag for. And then let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. It's a mother's curse. You hate your own mother until you become one, and then you are filled with the deepest respect. Most notably, Manu Fanny, the character that no doubtly most inspired Chi Chi Rodriguez. I'm sorry. <laughs> this girl's got a big mouth, but she knows how to use it. Manu Fanny, on the surface, was a trashy drag queen who just wants to use the public toilet. But near the end of the set, Leguizamo humanizes her and you feel like she's genuinely a good person with a soul. But I didn't care no more. Do you know why? Do you know why? Because I took charge of my life, that's why. And I just flicked on that radio and I drowned him out. To be or not to be, that is the question. But this film does not capitalize on John Leguizamo's ability to go deeper in his character studies. Chi Chi gets the short end of the stick development wise. She gets a few subplots on her journey to become a full-fledged drag queen. Attempted rape, played as a joke. That's how you pick up a lady. Okay, and even a straight guy love interest. But in true Hollywood fashion, heteronormacy wins in the end. The film borrows heavily from Felicia Jolly Goodfellow, but skips out on the whole lead falling in love with her part, which probably had a lot to do with the fact that Leguizamo and Swayze hated each other. You know, we had, we had issues and we, 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 were do, we were about to duke it out. We were about to fisty cuff each other. Dude. It's like, come on, man, come on. You were gonna punch out Roadhouse. And we're dressed like chicks. And so we're about to punch each other. And Wesley Snipes is like, go ahead, John, I got your back. <laughs> but then we have our other stars. Let's move on to Noxima Jackson, shall we? I will say this, Wesley Snipes does not get enough credit as a character actor. Scratch that, Wesley Snipes doesn't get enough credit as an actor, period. He is absolutely brilliant in this, and Tu Wong Fu, he really hits the nail on the head. Mostly because Wesley Snipes is so go hard or go home with his performance. Of all the girls, I feel like she gets the most flack for not looking like a woman, which if anyone knows anything about drag, knows it's a little more than that. But in all honesty, she's the most like a drag queen I've actually known. Her subplot revolves around her befriending a reclusive old woman, and they form a bond over black actresses from the past. It's pretty endearing, and you can tell Wesley makes the most of it, knowing he really got the shaft character development-wise. I think you should apologize to me. <laughs> and I also think you should apologize to those ladies over there. I ain't apologizing to no ladies. No way. No way. Uh, Just as I expected. Do you like my nails? Oh! 
And then we have Vita Boem. Let's talk about Vita, shall we? She's the serious one. Her head's screwed on so tight it goes around a couple times. Vita is the fixer of the group. She takes it upon herself to fix problems in other people's lives, despite anyone asking her to. Some ladies need to get hit. Keep the change, Roadhouse. A point Chi Chi calls her out on in the third act. Oh, here we go, here we go again. It's the why I'm always right and you're wrong song sung by her lonely breast to sit herself. Let me ask you, Vita, what do you know about relationships, huh? I mean, who loves you, baby? Oh, be quiet, Chi Chi. You're just deluding Nobody, yourself. Nobody, that's who. Not even your rich mommy and daddy. Okay. She makes some progressive good in the town, but I can't help but hark back at the point Chi Chi had made earlier. Why are you stuck in this town? Why are you helping these people? It's like the writer was trying to tell the producers the kind of movie they should have been making all along. It's this scene in the first act the plot should have set up camp on, where Vita sees her mother outside of her birth home, and sees her mother recoil at the sight of her. There's a better movie right there! If you're gonna hoist the central conflict onto this character, give her something compelling to strive for. And did they ever explain why they're all still in drag? In the opening, we see them getting ready, and competing in a drag queen pageant, and even going to an after party. But then they're in full gig to go buy a car and they're to travel on the road. They've been in their costume makeup for days, it seems. How do they have enough pants stick for that? Why is no one answering these questions? I get that the producers probably wanted to get the most out of this gimmick of macho action stars and dresses and makeup. He's been a killer and a commando. He's been a heartthrob and a hero. But these tough guys are about to face the most physically challenging roles of their careers. Let's give it to him, girl. But it's confusing to an audience that doesn't know that drag queens are real people and have everyday lives. Which I have to ask this. If this is Vita's movie, why not have it be about the strained relationship with her mother? Maybe have them stranded in Val Kinwood and give excuse to the characters having to be in drag throughout to keep up a disguise. It could be like a hybrid of Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, crossed with Mrs. Doubtfire. You could have Patrick Swayze disguising himself as Vita to get closer to his mother and create a really endearing arc for both characters, with the subplots of the other two being affected very little by the setting change. And we could discard the flab like the abusive husband and the found-in sheriff antagonist. And seriously, out of the blue Spartacus reference at the end, yes, Tu Wong Fu is flawed, but there's a lot of good in it. The characters are well written, and the casting is spectacular. But Vita, Noxie, and yes, even you, Chi Chi, you all deserved a better movie. Maybe Hollywood just didn't have faith that a movie about actual LGBT issues would sell. You've taken risks in the past that paid off, like Some Like It Hot in Tootsie. There's a reason why Priscilla, Queen of the Desert is remembered fondly and, and Tu Wong Fu isn't. The movie is enjoyable and it does have its audience and you have to appreciate the major risks all three of these actors took by doing this movie. It is a part of our Drake history, flawed or not. Given how intense the filming was and all the passion behind it, there really was something here and perhaps somebody will revisit it someday and make it the movie it could have been. In closing, to you the people, thanks for everything. James Mansfield. Body beautiful baby, work that body. Body beautiful baby, work it, work it.